Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. Thank you for being here. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile and general B contractor here in the great state of California. I've been licensed since 2003. Today I have a great video for you on the IQ I <laughs> on the IQ TSS244. <laughs> on the IQ TS244. So there's a lot of reviews out there on this saw. This is a saw that came on the market that I first saw maybe three or four years ago. Uh, Landberg Tile has some good reviews on it. I'm not gonna go over all the features of this saw because there's a lot of other information on there. I'm gonna go over some real experiences that we've had on this saw uh, since we've had it for a few years and we've used it on, we probably used it on four or five jobs. So I want to bring that experience, real world experience, real review on how this saw operates in the field. So uh, some of the features of this saw, obviously it's dustless. That was the, the big uh, coming out of this saw was that it wasn't gonna require water, which in itself is a nice feature. It's less messy, there's less waste, there's not the slurry you have to deal with. Uh, you can cut with it inside, you can cut with it in cold weather. So the concept of having a dustless saw is a great concept. So that's, that's the main feature of the IQ saw. So the way it operates is it has this vacuum system, which when you turn it on, uh, it uses these little cyclones to suck out the dust along with a filter. And then all of your, your dust gathers down in this little um, compartment right here. We have a lever that you just flip and it lowers this little tray. And you can see here is, uh, there's all of our dust from cutting tiles. So you just empty that um, at the end of every day. You don't need to empty the tray every day, but at the end of every day, there is, um, you spin this little filter. And what that does is it's knocking the dust off of that filter and putting it down into this tray. So you just, you just spin this once a day till it clicks and then that's good to go. That's all you need to do, empty it when it's full. So that's, that's really nice. Uh, this saw, one of the things about this saw that you might not be aware of, it's, uh, this saw weighs 93 pounds. Uh, and if you compare that to the DeWalt 24,000, uh, that's the DeWalt is 69 pounds. So you have 69 pounds or 93 pounds, that's 25 pounds difference. And not only that, not only is there a 25 pound difference between the assembled saw, uh, the DeWalt comes apart in pieces, right? You have the tray that comes off. So when you're moving the DeWalt around, it's extremely lightweight to move around. So um, that's one drawback to this saw that a lot of people don't know about is how heavy it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making some cuts and I'll show you how it operates. Okay, so the first uh, tile I'm gonna cut is a polished porcelain uh, marble look, and we're gonna see how this cuts. The saw is also very loud. Make sure you have hearing protection when using it. Okay, so uh, let's try that again. I don't know if I forced it a little too much or what, but let's see. <laughs> let's try again. Here we go. Is the blade just really dull? So, so I'm gonna try dressing the blade. I think the, the blade has just been dulled. Uh, let's see, um, because that's not right. It's not cutting right.
Okay, so let's see if that helped. Okay, so you can see what a difference uh, dressing up the blade made. Um, I know that is a big deal with these IQs. You need to keep your blade dressed um, using a dressing stick. I think IQ even makes their own. Uh, I had one before, it was a darker color, but I think any one will work. Um, you see, once I dressed the blade, it actually cut really nice. It was pretty slow. I had to go really slow to kind of keep it fed and smooth, but we ended up with, with not too bad of a cut. Um, it actually, um, minimal chipping, we should be able to get um, a lot of that out. So yeah, we were able to smooth most of those chips out to give us a nice, nice finish. Still a little chippier than a wet saw would do, uh, but I think that would definitely pass if you were doing a finished cut around a niche or um, somewhere where you're going to see that exposed cut. So uh, that's one porcelain. Let's, let's try another. I want to try a wood plank porcelain to see how that does. Uh, wood planks are a popular option. This is a porcelain wood plank tile. Let's see how it does. Um, you can see uh, this is probably the same as the DeWalt I'm not able to rip a 36 inch tile. Uh, so what I'll do is I will uh, feed it in as I go. Uh, we do have an extension table that goes with this, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Or should I? We have it. And then what you do is you need to uh, fix the table so the table doesn't slide. And now basically we have a table saw. So uh, let's see how this one does. So one thing that, that I notice uh, between this and using a wet saw is it's a lot slower. And I'm actually really having to kind of, I feel like I have to put a lot of pressure to get the material through the blade. Uh, here we have, um, you can see again, it did a decent job on this, this tile. A little bit chippy, uh, but not horrible. Again, I think with a rub stone, uh, some of that stuff will come out. So there's, there's still a few little chips that are showing through even after I rub it down. So, you know, I think it would pass. I don't think a homeowner would really complain about that, but it's definitely not giving you the same cut as a wet saw. So with this table saw, we've tried different methods to help the tile slide through a little easier, but there's just so much friction between the tile and this plastic board uh, we sprayed some, actually sprayed some graphite spray on here, hoping to make this a little slicker. That's what this dark stuff is. 
and um, it's still there's so much friction between the porcelain tile going through it that you really have to force it and if you're forcing it through it's going to want to move a little bit i had a really hard time keeping it on the rip fence as i went through so all in all um, it can be done so yeah so i don't think that's that's a great great way to do that i think it was a couple hundred dollars more uh, for this attachment the okay, last last thing i'm going to do is make a, a l cut with this porcelain tile see how that does So uh, for the most part, this cut really good. I got a nice, nice L cut in here. A uh, little chippy on the edge again. So yeah, I, I don't know. This is, uh... so I mean, it works. Again, if you were using this saw in maybe uh, a really cold location where water was just out of the picture, um, you know, maybe for small tiles, ceramic tiles, uh, subway tiles. Uh, but to do a whole job with it, it just seems like there's um, so many things lacking from a wet saw. Uh, just the cutting time that it took to cut the harder porcelain tile. This, this porcelain tile cut a lot better than our first one that was actually breaking when I first put it through and had to go really slow. So there's going to be certain tiles that do better than others, right? So if you have a, a DeWalt wet saw or any wet saw, I'm not sponsored by DeWalt or anything, uh, but it can be any wet saw. That just happens to be the saw we use. Uh, you, every tile, you know it's going to cut. You know it's going to cut hard porcelain. You know it's going to cut polished porcelain. You know it's going to cut long porcelain. You know it's going to cut glass tile if you needed to cut glass tile. I don't think you can cut glass tile with one of these. Um, so they're just so much more versatile. And you can set up water containment systems to cut down on the spray. Uh, so uh, for the price, and so this IQ goes for almost $1,900. I think retail $1,900. You'd have to pay a couple hundred more for the extension kit. Uh, a DeWalt you can usually get for around $800. So maybe $1,100 or $1,200 more you'd have to pay for one of these saws than a DeWalt. So if you're in the market for a saw, I would just stick with a traditional wet saw, whether that's a DeWalt, a Rigid, a Ruby. Uh, I mean, we got so many good wet saws out there. And, um, but if you wanted something for a special circumstance, say, um, and the reason why we bought this was because we were working up in Lake Tahoe in the middle of winter and we didn't want to have to deal with water. So we used this saw and it did okay. So. If you have that, I would consider it. If not, stick with a traditional wet saw, much more versatile, less than half of the price, way easier to move around. You can move it around by yourself. And um, yeah, so anyway, so this IQ has been sitting around in my shop for a long time. If you want this saw and you're in the Sacramento area, you know, hit me up, leave a comment in the section below you can probably just come pick it up because we really don't have much of a use for it. It's been sitting here on the rack for about a year and a half without being used. So if you want this saw, you know, hit me up, leave a comment in the section below and uh, you can have it. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching my videos. I hope this review helped, you know, just some honesty and experience instead of a lot of the other testing that's out there where it's just taken out of a box and they show you all the features and make a couple cuts. You know, we've had this saw run it in the field for uh, two or three years, even though it was limited, um, we still got a good feel of what it can and can't do. So um, yeah, I hope this video helped make your decision on whether to buy it or not. And last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach and we'll see you on the next video.